I want to introduce you to a concept that I actually practice a lot uh, on this channel, uh, on my Substack, is called mimetic defense. The idea is memes work like mind viruses, and AI in particular has a incredibly powerful hold on our imagination right now. And AI news articles often act like viruses. They infect our brains, they shape our perceptions before we think about what's really true or not. Uh, I worked on this uh, on my Substack over the weekend when I wrote about how we have dramatically misunderstood the energy consumption that an actual chat GPT query costs. I don't think many people realize this, but it is vastly, vastly more energy intensive to run your big screen TV and watch an NFL football game for an hour than it is to use a chat GPT query on the order of hundreds of times. But people don't think about that because the, they have no mimetic defense. The meme of energy consumption has entered our brains and shaped the conversation. That's true if you think about other critiques of AI as well. The water critique, people don't realize that major cloud manufacturers for cloud computing have said their data centers that they're building are going to be water positive within five years. Uh, and they're working on recycling water right now. So I could go on and on, but you get the idea. Mimetic defense isn't particularly sexy, but it is super, super important. And it's a lot of what I focus on is just being very clear and factual about what's really going on. And it's not just about AI safety or AI sustainability. Mimetic defense also pops up when we think about hype claims when it comes to AI. A recent study that came out uh, showed that 75%, according to senior executives, this was an IBM study, 75% uh, of projects that uh, are launched inside companies for AI fail to meet executive ROI targets. They end up being classed as misses and only 25% would be considered as meeting or exceeding ROI targets. That's pretty terrible. Like that's not great. Now, I for one think AI is actually high leverage enough that those 25% alone may justify the investment if you get them right. But that doesn't make the fact that we have a 75% miss rate on AI acceptable. And it certainly isn't the story that most of us see in the news. In the news, most of us see headline after headline after headline with AI is taking jobs, AI is taking over this and that and the other thing. And we miss stories like Klarna's where Klarna committed to firing 700 CS agents in 2024. And then they had to rehire customer success because their vaunted AI agent did not do the job that it was supposed to do. Again, we had no mimetic defense against that kind of hype. We were vulnerable to it. We were susceptible to it. So I'm a practical guy. I want to tell you what are some of the principles I go for that are principles that underline the medic defense, that shape a lot of how I do my YouTube, that shape a lot of how I do my Substack. Number one, I pre-dose with reality checks. I am really honest when I give you claims like this. Klarna has claimed, right, 700 agents and so on will be replaced by AI. And then I walk through the missing context. Like, you'll see me do this. I'll say, okay, this is the claim that was made. This is the context that we didn't talk about. I think that's really important. Pre-dosing with reality checks builds your mimetic immune system. Principle two is demanding some proofs. If there's a big claim, I tend to say, show me a demo, not a slide. This is a big problem that Devin had when it launched. It eventually launched, but when it launched, it was just a video. It wasn't actually a workable demo. Show me a proof of cost. This is actually one of the big issues that OpenAI has right now with their frontier models. They're having to put GPT 4.5 out of beta, out of production, because it, the rumor is it was so expensive to run. The compute and output tokens were so expensive. O3 is also a very expensive model. And so when we talk about intelligence, we need to talk about what is the cost of that intelligence? This is actually an area where Google has been really relentless about cutting costs and making it easier for developers. The third one I'll call out is proof of time to utility, especially if you're talking about enterprise architecture and enterprise change management. It is not fast to make these changes and promising that it will be a change overnight is not honest. It's not transparent. It's not true. 
And so I tend to actually look pretty hard at proof of work, proof of cost and proof of time to utility because I want to know, right? Like, is this something that actually is going to stand up or not? The third principle. So we talked about pre-dosing with reality checks. We talk about demanding some proofs. The third principle is tracking signal to buzz, right? Is this only mimetic headlines or is there actually something here where I can read a case study, I can get into the substance? This is where I actually really want to appreciate what Claude and OpenAI have done in exposing model cards. I think it's a good choice. I wish that Grok would do it. It's really important to have solid technical insights that underline claim technical advancements. The fourth piece of mimetic defense you can adopt in your personal immune system is stress testing second order effects. So you can ask yourself, learn to ask yourself the question, what if this piece of hype is real? What is the second order effect? Let's say the demo works. What happens when Devin writes code out of its training data set that is somebody else's copyrighted code on accident? What happens when Devin puts a PR into production and nobody checked it because they trusted Devin and now there's a bug in production? Is Devin liable? Is the engineer liable? Now, I am sure that Devin's lawyers have written up the terms of service to answer those questions, so I don't mean to pick on Devin per se. I'm not saying they have particular gaps there. But it's an example of the kind of question that you need to ask when you get these hypey headlines. It helps you to build your mimetic immune system. The fifth one I want to call out is closing with constructive skepticism. If you're evaluating a meme that comes through that's hyper, hyper attention grabbing that just gets into your lizard brain really fast, get yourself into the mode of saying, here's what would make me change my mind. Ask yourself, what evidence am I looking for that would make me change my mind on this attention grabbing headline and, and name it and then be on the lookout for it. It trains you to be a bit more of a critical thinker. I doubt that you'll be surprised if you follow my channels anywhere, you know, this is kind of how I work, but I wanted to expose it. I'm basically trying to build an AI hype immune system here. I want us to get from AI hype to AI productivity. And that means in building an immune system against the worst parts of AI hype. So I hope these five principles of mimetic defense are helpful. I may do some more writing on this, but I wanted to at least call them out uh, and share them here. Cheers.